Russian collusion is no delusion. I'm Jessica Denson, and this is Lights On. It's a massive scandal that Bill Barr wanted us all to forget. The Kremlin hoisted Donald J. Trump to the American presidency. And eight years later, in the midst of a genocidal war and the murder of political foes, Vladimir Putin is trying to do it again. We're usually talking about Donald Trump's candidacy as a criminal impunity plan, which it absolutely is. But when you couple it with a Russian influence campaign to install their orange ally as an American dictator, it truly is the greatest scandal in American history. My guest today has been screaming from the rooftops about this collusion intrusion and was majorly vindicated this week when we learned that the GOP's indicted FBI source behind the sham Biden impeachment is in fact backed by Russian intelligence. He knows how we got here because he was there when the Kremlin was trying desperately to keep Trump in office the first time. His book, Shadow Diplomacy, comes out today. Lev Parnas, welcome to Lights On. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. Thank you. My pleasure. You were saying just before we started this that God works in mysterious ways. I mean, what a week for your book to come out with this arrest of Alexander Smirnov, the re revelation of his connection to the Kremlin. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's just incredible. I, I mean, everything that's been happening in my life, I mean, I just thank God uh, because it's just, it's incredible. The things that happen, I, it just it wouldn't be able to happen without him. And uh, I mean, yeah, the book is coming, finally came out. I'm excited because now finally everything that I've been talking about, I could go further into detail and uh, explain everything that happened. And um, especially with what's happening right now, I mean, I'm just uh, in shock to see to what lengths. I mean, I knew uh, what length Giuliani and uh, Bill Barr and Trump were going to go to, but to see other players in the FBI, in, in the uh, Justice Department, to be able uh, to, I don't know how, what the right word is, uh, you know, play dumb, overlook, not do it, conspire, whatever the case is, to, be, to go to such extremes to allow Russian disinformation to reach not only the halls of Congress, but to our DOJ, where we're now uh, in the middle of an impeachment of the president of the United States on the word of an informant that was passing Russian information. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, if this was a movie or a book, nobody would believe it. Think it was, it, it was made Couldn't up. Make it up. It's incredible. Couldn't make it up. I just want to take note of one thing you said, and that's how, how God is working so beautifully in your life. And why? Because you came clean, because you took responsibility, yes. you came clean. And, um, you know, we have this criminal party uh, led by a criminal dear leader who refuses to come clean on so many things. Um, and that is why they will continue to lose. We will just need to stay alert and continue to call them out. But um, I, I want to remind our viewers um, just who, who don't know about your backstory. I mean, how we got here. You, of course, were arrested along with your um, colleague, Igor Fruman, instead of Giuliani being arrested, mm -hmm. instead of Trump's other allies being arrested. Um, and and you, you carried water for this criminal scheme that was backed by Russian intelligence. Can you just kind of take us back to that time frame in 2018, 2019, when this Absolutely. was all going on? Absolutely. I mean, it was it was just like uh, an incredible whirlwind uh, event. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, my relationship with Trump uh, grew earlier than 2018. Since 2015, 16, uh, I was very close uh, in Trump's inner circle uh, through other sources. But in 2018, uh, I became very close with Rudy Giuliani. And um, with, as our relationship grew and became closer and we spent more and more time together on a daily basis, I started realizing to what extent uh, Ukraine was on his mind. At that point, it was mostly the manna for Black Ledger and uh, also uh, the servers that uh, they, they thought they were in Ukraine and stuff like that. And then one evening, we were sitting at the Grand Havana room, and Rudy got a call from one of his investigators, Bart Schwartz, and basically told him he had a whistleblower and started feeding him all of this Hunter Biden stuff and other stuff that had to do with Ukraine. At that time, me and Igor were sitting with them, and like usually after Rudy is done with this phone call he would join us and basically fill us in on everything that he was talking about he was very excited telling us about all the stuff on ukraine that he had and at that time igor passed over his phone and he had a video of that infamous where joe biden goes out there and says get rid of the the 
prosecutor, otherwise you won't get the billion dollar aid. And we showed it to Rudy and that was the first time he seen it. His lights lit up and he was like, he found gold. He says, we got him, we got him. And the next thing I knew, two weeks later, we're at the White House. Uh, it was a Hanukkah party that we went to and we're at the White House and uh, Rudy went first to meet up with Trump uh, to t tell him about the things that we discussed because part of our discussion was that Rudy wanted to find Victor Shokin. And I told him that through our contacts, we could go to Ukraine and find Victor Shokin for him. And that's when we went to the White House. He filled Trump in and Trump praised me, told me. All keep on board, up. right? You know how he does it. He goes, keep up the good work. Thumbs up, took some pictures in the Red Room, had a blast. And then next thing you know, a week later, I'm in Ukraine in the middle of the woods looking for Victor Shokin. Uh, we ended up finding Victor Shokin. And that's how it all started. And it, it was a whirlwind of events. I mean, we probably spend, that's why I wrote the book, because not one, we can't fill in everything on one show or one interview or, uh, yeah, unfortunately, because there was just too much things that happened in that time period. Uh, I mean, in Ukraine, in the United States, I mean, I can't even tell you, Jessica, and that's not even including uh, the stuff that had transpired between Venezuela, Maduro, Bolton, Turkey, uh, with, uh, you know, as Ukraine. So I'm saying to you, there was a lot. So that's why I wrote the book. But uh, I think the most important thing right now that on, is on everybody's mind, and I think that we need to dive into is what's going on now. I mean, this, this, is just unheard of. They re, they again rearrested this informant, and yeah. fine, and I and, yeah. and I still can't believe yeah, how the, it the magistrate judge in in Las Vegas had initially let him out on his own recognizance, and then he went. They the prosecutors brought it before the U.S. district yeah. judge, judge in California, and he's like, "No, you get you get in custody right now, buddy." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I still can't believe they let him go. I mean, just based yeah. on what I went through and understanding how the system works, to to see them let him go, the, especially the way the prosecutors and the DOJ went after him. That's also shocking to me, but I'm glad he's not going to get away. I'm glad hopefully we yeah. were going to get some answers from him because I have a feeling it's going to lead back to uh, certain some of the usual suspects. If I'm right, we're going to hear the same names like Andre Dierkoch back in the picture, the same mm -hmm. the same same players that were involved in the 2019-2020 with, uh, with Rudy and the whole thing, yeah. It is truly wild. I want to tell our viewers right now, Lev has been very generous. Um, we are live, live right now. And Je Lev has actually offered to answer some of your questions at the end of this episode. So definitely stay tuned to the end. We're going to look at the chat, take some live questions for Lev. Um, so, you know, get your minds working as to what you want, what you, what questions, burning questions you want answered. Um, but Absolutely. This is, this is, like I said, in my open, a massive scandal. I mean, the fact that we have a dictatorial, genocidal, uh, authoritarian regime running the politics of half of our body politic in America is unbelievable. Um, and the amount of cover that has been given to this. Um, and I really want to go into to this with you, Lev, about the period of time when you were arrested and the involvement of the special counsel. You and I were talking earlier and, and yeah. you mentioned Scott Brady. I'm like, why yeah. have I, why does this name not sound familiar to me? And you said, because he never did anything. Tell me what was going on with special counsel um, Scott Brady in 2019 and why you were targeted specifically for arrest. I mean, I'm still when I, the things that I'm starting to see on uh, you know uh, the news coming out about uh, Scott Brady's interview and uh, his interview with Rudy and then him being interviewed by Democratic staffers and the answers. I mean, I'm I'm just sick sick to my stomach. And even though I knew it, but this now starts validating to understand how what they did to an American citizen, the government, the United States. I mean, Bill Barr along with uh, Brady and the rest of them and certain people in Congress basically went and destroyed my life and went and ruined my family's life just for the fact of trying to silence me so I can't get the truth out. And that's the sick part. The sick part is like it, 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 they're supposed to be out there to protect us American citizens and to be able to defend and get the truth out. And they did the exact opposite. Bill Barr arrested me to silence me, to protect Donald Trump, because he knew when the whistleblower came out, uh, the indictment was going to uh, came out at the, almost at the same exact time. So I couldn't testify. <laughs> 
then they went ahead and they tried to discredit me, make me a liar, make me an indicted individual. So this way the press and then this way Congress or nobody would want to listen to me because they knew that if I start talking that the stories I'm going to tell, people are probably going to think I'm crazy. But what they did count on is that I was had all the receipts because I never believed I was doing anything wrong. I thought I was a part of history, something that I was going to save and have all my family one day see. So I kept all the pictures, the tweets, the receipts, the uh, emails, the text messages and I to myself till this day I find stuff that I couldn't believe and it amazed me that you know it is in my uh, uh, cell phone and the FBI had my cell phone when they arrested me not only did the FBI have my cell phone the Southern District of New York had my cell phone they had all the information and in that information was a, a, a uh, basically a, a transcript between me and uh, the CEO of Burisma uh, Zlochevsky where Rudy put together a string of questions that he wanted answered. Basically, uh, did Biden, did you pay Biden any money? Did you uh, have Biden influence any decisions? Did you have Biden uh, get rid of Victor Shokin? About, about 12 to 14 questions. And Victor and uh, Zlochevsky answered them and he responded basically no to all of them. And uh, Giuliani, when he saw that, he told me to bury it, never to be seen again. So he probably assumed that I erased it and threw it out, but I didn't. I had it on my phone. So when I was arrested, they had that. They saw them. They saw Zlochevsky's own words telling uh, me and Giuliani, basically, that he never paid Biden. He never did, uh, had any uh, 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 relationship with Biden to get out of Victor Shokin. So what, if they would have looked at that and if they would have seen that, they would have known that the 1023 that they were taking from their informant in 2020, a year after I got arrested, a year after they had all the information, they would have at least had to have questioned me. They would have at least had to do some sort of investigation to see the, the difference in the two testimonies. But they didn't. Not only did they didn't do that, they didn't. I also handed all of that information over to the House Impeachment Committee and the Trump impeachment. They didn't do that. They didn't go and take a look at any information in the impeachment committee that I handed over. To make it further, my attorneys try to contact Scott Brady to be able to talk to him, to be able to tell him exactly what transpired in Ukraine, uh, tell him about the false information that the uh, Russians were trying to get through me, tell him the individuals that were involved. He never returned any phone calls. I couldn't understand why. Me and my lawyers never understood why. And, you know, with time, we basically forgot about it. And then uh, uh, Marcy Wheeler, you know, uh, MT Wheeler basically on uh, Twitter put out this incredible uh, outline of uh, what really happened and the reporting of the interviews that uh, and the answers that Scott Brady gave. He basically said uh, to the Democratic House staffers saying that the reason that he did not question me or deal with me or take any of my information was because I was indicted. Really? Because I was indicted? I mean, don't they deal with indicted individuals every day? And then they that's how they get cooperating witnesses. That's how they get information. But even if they didn't want to speak to me, especially that when they speak to me, the first thing they tell you is that if you lie, that's another charge you're going to get to lying to a federal agency. So they have nothing to lose. If I'm crazy enough to go to them and give them lies again, they could add another five years to my sentence. So what do they have to lose to talk to me, to listen to me? Why are they so eager to just shut me up and not talk to me, not look at my evidence, not discuss it? Just think to yourself. And we're finding out to this day now, four years later, we're finding out, we're seeing what really transpired, how they tried to silence me, hide and bury all this evidence. Well, Lev, well, my God, as you were talking, I'm literally dealing with a fire alarm in the background. So oh, okay. thank you for Thank you for filling us in. I'm, we're live, live right now, as we said, and I've moved outside because there's a fire alarm inside. I don't think it's an actual emergency, so no worries. Oh, I hope but... not. Okay, I hope not. Yes. <laughs> the the, the uh, antics of doing a live show. Um, but it's it's truly extraordinary. And I know all about, you know, their attempts to silence people who have truthful information that they don't want out. You know, I experienced my own um Absolutely. Yeah. yeah very serious efforts to silence me by attempting to bankrupt me during the trump administration so i wouldn't speak out truthfully about them um but lev if we can just continue at in the backdrop of all of this you have got the republican party withholding aid to ukraine denying um the support that the ukrainians desperately needed some of the worst attacks have happened this week in kherson and dnipro um the, the ukrainians are 
desperately in need of more funding, of more artillery. Um, and you have this MAGA caucus withholding aid while Biden. Yeah, that, that was the word. Yeah. MAGA yeah. caucus, not the Republicans, because majority of the Republicans won. Majority of the world and people, good normal people understand that they gotta be, aid has to be given to Ukraine. It's just that yeah. few mega cultists that are led by Trump that well, are just that, said no. That's what, you know, that's what I was thinking of when I was writing this open. Once again, you the, the, the normal ones, the so-called sane ones, let the MAGA caucus run the show. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but has a mass of the so-called sane Senate Republicans come out and condemn the Trump uh, pres uh, candidacy no. that's backed by Vladimir Putin? Because no, if they did, scared. I missed it. Yeah. They're scared. No, they're scared. I mean, I've never, I've never seen people be so scared. Uh, I mean, that's why you know you're dealing with a dictatorship. Because yep. when uh, people in power, uh, majority, and have the power to basically do whatever they want, and they're scared of a guy that's running around saying nonsense, <laughs> I mean, it, it just shows you the power that Trump has in his, and and if God forbid he was ever to come anywhere near the White House, to what level of danger our country and the world would be at? Because we would have probably imagine America being run by a dictatorship. The, the most powerful country yes. in the world. And the, it's just, I mean, I just can't even imagine. I don't want to even go into it and even put it out there. It's just it's not real. But this yeah. is the people we're and dealing with. That, yeah. It is. It is exactly. And to highlight that contrast today, we had uh, Biden, who, of course, met with the widow of Navalny, Yulia Naval Navalnaya, yesterday and her beautiful daughter, Dasha. Um, today, he was in the White House announcing announcing sanctions to Russia because of the killing of Alexei Navalny. And maybe we can play that clip for our viewers. That's why I'm announcing more than 500 new sanctions in response. In response to Putin's brutal war of conquest, in response to uh, Alexei Navalny's death, because make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Alexei's death. Yesterday, I met with Alexei's wife and daughter in California, where his daughter attends college. Alexei was an uh, incredibly courageous man. His family is courageous as well. I assured them his legacy will continue to live around the world. And we in the United States are going to continue to ensure that Putin pays the price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. I mean, that's a president. That's the words of a president, not a dictator that tweeted out and compared uh, Navalny's death to his own problems in the United States. I mean, there's, that should just paint the whole difference. One is all about me, me, me. And that's why I still can't understand how majority of his own cultist mega world can't realize that it's not about them. It's not about, it's all about him. And yeah, but yeah I know. You throw any off. single one of them under the bus in a second, in a yep. second for, to benefit him. And the other thing you've got, Lev, is you've got these, um, it's really sad. I mean, you've got these poor duped Americans across the country um, feeding into his campaign coffers because he has this sick, convoluted, gaslit projection about him being a political prisoner, comparing himself to Alexei Navalny. I mean, how sick is that? Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're contributing to his legal funds because he's now he's now in nearly half a million dollars in debt to the New state of New York. Yesterday, Judge Angoran refused his request to have that um, stayed. Um, and and once again, once again, Lev, here is this American, former American disgraced president, current candidate as a prime target for foreign influence. And you know the crazy part? You have crazy nuts out yeah. there. You have one guy, uh, Cardone, and his wife that put a GoFundMe page up there that's already raised over a million dollars to pay off this debt. Are you? I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't have any words for that. I don't understand that. Like, why would you want to give your heart? And the people that are giving it, these are people that can't afford it. Trust me, when I tell you, these are people that are paying sixty dollars, twenty dollars. These are people that are using money that they could spend on shopping, gas, or food instead to send it to them because they feel that they're a part of some kind of revolution. That's the whole mindset, and he's feeding off of them. Normal uh, wealthy individuals are not uh, 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 giving Trump money. They're walking away from him. He's getting it off the masses and, you know, he's preying on the poor. And it's, you know, 
it's it's he, he's just a, a, a sick individual and uh, I, I don't have uh, you know very nice words to say about him and he does not deserve to be where he is right now and i still can't believe that there's so many americans till this day but i you know when you look at it even though i can't believe it but you know if you really look at it because he has so many enablers it's not just him you have so many of these people in congress you have the doj you have people in the fbi you have people all over that are supporting him and allowing him to get away with these things just think about again this informant i mean they've known yep. about him for a while yeah they have yeah, known and you talked about um no it's okay you talked about giuliani um his his targeting by the by russian intelligence being known to the fbi back when bill barr was investigating all this i mean this was no secret they've known about this for years and been covering for it jim jordan yeah, just, james yeah. comer they've all known just think about a few months ago we had the whistle the fbi whistleblower come out balma talking about how they stopped him and how giuliani was being corrupted by pavel fuchs a ukrainian oligarch that was working for the russians everything i, I was talking about that led him into andrei telezhenko that andrei telezhenko who then the united states government sanctioned who happened to be giuliani's and ron johnson and john solomon's main guy to get information so, and they knew about it. And the sick part is they know about it now. Just think about how they're reacting to it. Normal people would react and say, oh my God, I can't believe we were duped. I can't believe this happened. Let's persecute this guy. Let's get back to normality. I'm sorry, President Biden, and let's go move on. Instead, these guys are saying, no, it's, 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 like, a, it's like a magic show. All of a sudden, it disappeared. All of a sudden, he's irrelevant. The, the, their number one witness, their number one testimony, the most credible. If you look at some of these testimonies, I mean, these guys will go out there. They have never met him, spoken to him, but they talked about him like they've known him for the rest of their life. He's the most credible uh, 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 witness the FBI has ever had. Are you kidding me? It's just mind boggling. And these are the people they're enabling Trump because normal people that watch TV and see their congressmen, their senators and their ex-president saying the same thing. I mean, you know, it's it's easy to fall into that. It's easy to fall in and thinking it's us against them because is you know uh, Americans have a mindset. They they it's like football. You pick a team, you pick a side, and you know uh, we've just gone to a, a degree where Trump is taking us to the Stone Ages, where we're we're now have to pick a side to such a degree where you know we have to go to war. I mean, we could agree to disagree. We don't have to agree on every single subject, but we're at a point in division in our country and just look what he has done. Look at what is going on. I mean, we have uh, the FBI, the DOJ, the congressmen, senators, everybody's at each other's throat. People are talking about uh, elections and who's going to win president. I mean, at the end of the day, nothing could go happen anyway unless the Democrats somehow god bless win the presidency the senate and the congress only then i think we can move forward because otherwise look at what's going on we had a congress that doesn't do nothing except run around chase their tail and talk uh, keep trying to spread russian disinformation for the past two and a half years since they recovered they have done nothing they passed nothing they just uh, spread lies and lies and lies i mean so look at the end of the day uh, we need some major reform. We need answers. We need to have Scott Brady sit in front of Congress, and we need him to answer answers in front of all of us. And the public needs to understand why he did what he did, why he was the special counsel in charge of the Ukraine investigation to root out and vet everything that uh, Rudy brings, anybody brings that has to do with Ukraine. And what did he do? Not only did he not vet Rudy's information, he buried my information. The guy that was on the ground, the guy that was dealing and doing everything, the guy that gave the quid pro quo that President Trump gave, said that he's going to withhold military aid, the guy that dealt with all of these people, and what does he do? He doesn't even talk to me. He doesn't look at my uh, uh, stuff that the FBI had. He doesn't look at the stuff that I gave over to the. He just basically ignores it. And, and he's the special counsel. This is the, I mean, I don't believe that that's incompetence. And I don't believe that there's any, uh, it was, there was a mistake. And I truly believe he did that intentionally and he needs to answer for it. Because if maybe he would have spoken to me and said, there would have been a difference. There, this, this sham wouldn't have gone on right now. We probably wouldn't have January 6th because Trump wouldn't be around. Exactly. So, so yeah. I mean, just think about all the chain of events because these guys tried to make me the scapegoat and bury uh, the information that I literally was trying to tell the whole world that listen, this is fake. I mean, I've been dealing with this, and the guys that are pushing it, they're all connected to Russia, and Giuliani yeah. knows about it, 
Fox News knows about it. Uh, John Solomon knows about it. Uh, Senator uh, Ron Johnson knows about it. Devin Nunez knows about it. They all know about it. And now they brought in Johnson and Comer. They were all in the loop. Yeah. Remember that? They were all I, in oh, the loop. I remember, Lev. I remember it so. And by the way, I'm back inside now. What a wild, what a wild day. Thanks. You're, you're pro, Lev. You're pro. Thanks for carrying the show while <laughs> getting my bearings here. Um, but it's, it is so infuriating what you say about needing to get every single one of these uh, MAGA Republicans out of power, which means that we have to take back the House, which seems like not a far, hard thing to do, and also, and also hold the Senate. So very vital as well, well as, of course, right. making sure that Putin doesn't install Donald Trump as president again. Um, but, you know, I want to, I, I really, I really just want to like, when you were talking in the beginning about that video you heard about Biden saying, yeah, I'm trying to get the prosecutor fired. It's so ironic because yeah, he was trying to get the prosecutor fired because the prosecutor would not bring indictments. He was trying to get a corrupt prosecutor yeah. who would not yeah. indict Burisma yeah. fired. I mean, it's yeah. you, and I don't want to group you in this because I used to, you know, I used to be a useful idiot for some of these stupid things once upon a time too. But I mean, it, it takes some useful idiocy to even buy in. I mean, just simple logic debunks all of these lies. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane. I, I mean, uh, uh, these guys, I mean, uh, the logic, there is no logic. There's no, no common sense. No. There is, it's, it's, if it fits into their uh, uh, itinerary, if it fits into their uh, uh, narrative, then it goes. No. I've never seen that. I mean, literally, you know, you would think that with all, you know, him being a president at the time, Trump and Giuliani and all of them and all of these congressmen and as Nunez was the head of the Judiciary Committee. I mean, all of these positions, I mean, that they would be able to vet anybody or anything. They had the power at their hands and they were so corrupt themselves that they didn't trust their own services. So they didn't have no way of vetting. This is what people don't understand, because if they were to vet it, they would have to give it to the intelligence department. But they didn't trust the intelligence department to such a degree, thinking that they were against them, that this information would not get vetted. You know, so we were basically I was realizing that we're getting information from people that are just like anybody could just have given us this letter. I mean, like and the next thing you know, I see it on Fox. Yeah. Yeah, but and somebody's the, saying in the chat right now, it wasn't just VP Biden, uh, Vice President Biden that wanted to fire this prosecutor. Half of NATO did. I mean, this, oh, the whole oh, world really? wanted to. This was yeah. a cleanup operation for, you know, trying to make Ukraine the successful democracy that it hoped to be, you know, cleaning out corruption. And that, I mean, and I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Lev, that's why they they hired a Biden name to sit on their board in the first place. 100%. Because they were trying to get credibility as not yeah. being corrupt. And that was what Biden stood for. So they hire the Hunter Biden name to sit on their board. And and that happened. And you know the crazy part? To listen to them talk about Hunter Biden's on the board. If we took a look at the boards of all American fi Fortune 500 companies and take a look at some of the people yeah. on the board, oh I guarantee God. you a majority of them have no idea and concept of the industry, but they have a name. A name. And that and because of that name, they're on that board. And yeah. that's the, typically what happens. And that this is the same exact thing that happened here. The only thing is there was like a, a coincidence, as, as, and I hate to use the words and I don't believe, but there was such a coincidence that when Joe Biden went out and said that, and this is another thing very important, Jessica, that the public needs to understand. Yeah. Joe Biden was not the president of the United States when this happened. President Obama was the president. Joe right. Biden does not have the keys to the car. He could not have went and fired Shokin if he wanted to. Yeah. The only way he could have done that was because on behalf of the administration. So so the, the fact that they want to impeach Biden over this and not, I mean, you would have to go to about because, you know, he's the one that wanted this done. And Biden was just basically performing his duty. So, I mean, it's none of it makes sense that their their whole story has holes in it from uh, left to right. But the biggest hole is that every source of information that we've gotten that uh, that was supposed to lead to that big you know bombshell of you know the uh recordings the wire transfer all the stuff that was going to catch him by his uh, red handed we never got it and the, the other thing was that it was always it, even if it was different people but the information was coming out almost the, in the same way spread through different people and it was all coming from russia yeah and, and the they really 
yeah. Lev, they really were trying. I mean, this was a coordinate. The whole Hunter laptop thing was really a coordinated smear campaign, wasn't it? I mean, can oh, you just go? Can you just go into? Um, I can't believe. I mean, thank God Hunter's lawyers are taking legal action on some of these fronts. But the the way that he was set up when he was vulnerable, when he was an addict, and then this whole concoction of the laptop with Steve Bannon and his allies, aided by Rudy Giuliani. I mean, when you think back on your involvement in in this whole scheme, and that there is a real live human being behind this who has experienced a lot of loss in his life, who was suicidal at times. I mean, it's really, really sick what they did to this man, isn't it? Oh, and not only sick, demented. And what they're continually doing to him is sick and demented. I mean, it's like you're they're obsessed with him. Enough is enough. You need to move on. I mean, I, I could guarantee you if we if, uh, if anybody wanted to do the same thing to Donald Trump Jr., they would have a blast. Or, or and there's plenty of people out there that, uh, you know, have issues and problems. And it's not, you know, uh, our job to go out there and make fun of it and abuse it like these people are doing. It's disgusting. Mm. I mean, and as far as what the Russians did and as far as what Zlachevsky did, you know, at his most vulnerable time. I mean, these are the people, you know, the world, you know, the uh, the atmosphere he was playing in, you know. I mean, these are, you know, people that definitely took advantage of him when he was most vulnerable. Uh, certain things I can't go into because I, I I'd like to uh, keep certain things and try to keep the integrity. If uh, especially since the impeachment is still ongoing, and you never know with every day there's a new twist of events, and uh, you know there's certain stuff even in the book that I've tried to keep out just in case if I ever do get called or need to testify to be able to uh, really you know uh, save the integrity of the testimony of exactly what happened with Hunter Biden and the laptop and everything. But I can yeah. tell you this much. And that's one of the things that I saw in the testimony when Ru when uh, um, Scott Brady interviewed Rudy. There's two things Rudy never told Scott Brady. He didn't tell him about the answers from Zlachevsky. He hid that. And he also never told him about the meeting we had with Vitaly Proust in June, in, uh, May or June of 2019, when we found out about the laptop and the hard drive existence. And he never told him that he was supposed to be on the plane with me picking up the hard drive the day I got arrested out to Vienna. So there's a lot of things Rudy held back uh, about information. And there's a lot more to the story with the laptop. And I man Hunter Biden's lawyers and Hunter that finally he's taking an offense. I mean, it's about time. Yeah. He needs to go after all of these people. They're all yeah. complicit. And, you know, if they ever call on me or need any help, I'm there to be able to tell the truth and let them know exactly to what degree they went to to try to destroy him as as an American citizen, forget about all the politics, but as an individual, I mean, not you know, and I'm not even going to the state. Steve Bannon, disgusting stuff that he yeah. did with China, and I mean, Rudy Giuliani, Trump, and the BLT team, as I call them. I mean, that was an evil group of people. I mean, that would go to any lengths. It really is evil, and I really appreciate. It speaks to your integrity, your motive, uh, the the cleanness of your motive in wanting to protect that. Um, if it should be needed in an investigation. Thank you. So much more with you, Lev, after the break. We're going to take a deep breath, okay. <laughs> recompose, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. The older I get, the more I find myself wanting to be more intentional about the way I live, what I eat, and how I take care of my body. Mosh is a company founded by Maria Shriver and her son, Patrick Schwarzenegger, with a simple mission to create conversation about brain health, through food, education, and research. Maria's father suffered from Alzheimer's, and since then, she and Patrick have dedicated themselves to finding ways to help other families dealing with this debilitating disease. Mosh joined forces with the world's top scientists and functional nutritionists to go beyond your average protein bar with six delicious flavors, each mosh bar has 12 grams of protein and is made with ingredients that support brain health like ashwagandha, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. They also have a line of plant-based protein bars in three delicious flavors. But here's the best part to make you feel good. Mosh donates a portion of all proceeds from your order to fund gender-based brain health research through the Women's Alzheimer's Movement. Why gender-based? Two-thirds of all Alzheimer patients are women. Mosh is working closely to close the gap between women and men's health research. The Mosh bars are incredibly delicious. They are my favorite. My favorite 
favorite is the peanut butter crunch. Now I eat my mosh bar in the morning for breakfast, and it's the perfect way to kickstart my morning. I'm always carrying around my mosh bars. The mosh bars travel super well and always make for the best pre-workout meal for me. If you want to find ways to give back to others and fuel your body and your brain, mosh bars are the perfect choice for you. Head to moshlife.com slash lights to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack at M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash lights. Thank you, Mosh, for sponsoring this episode. Heart health and staying healthy, especially when you have family, friends, or loved ones that you want to be able to spend as much time with as possible. It's so important, folks. February is Heart Health Month in the United States, and more than half the population would still benefit from blood pressure support. Super Beats Heart Shoes are the number one doctor, pharmacist, and cardiologist recommended way to support healthy blood pressure, and they even promote heart-healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And with over 40,000 five-star reviews and counting, people are raving about Super Beats Heart Shoes. Super Beats Heart Shoes are absolutely delicious and are truly much better than any alternative supplements out there. I take my Super Beats Heart Shoes each morning and it's really helped kickstart my day. After taking my Super Beats Heart Shoes, I feel like I have more energy and I'm ready to take on the day. Super Beats Heart Shoes are plant-based and so easy to add to your routine. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. So support your health with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free month supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes on all bundles and a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 with your order by going to lightsonbeats.com. So get this exclusive offer only at lightsonbeats.com. So, you know, Lev, um, I don't think we have to look any farther than what's going on in Russia today for a sign of what could happen in this country. Um, you look at the crackdown on mourners for Navalny. Hundreds of people have been arrested simply for mourning for a man who is opposed to the regime of Vladimir Putin. Um, Alexei Navalny's mother has been very outspoken, very brave, saying she wants her son's body back. They won't give it to her. She's claiming... Um, very probably truthfully that there she's being blackmailed by the Kremlin. Um, they don't want a public funeral for Alexei Navalny because they Vladimir Putin is scared of him. He, he doesn't want the public showing of support to be out there and and visible for the world to see. Um, but this is really this is really what Donald Trump aims to have in this country. You lived it. I lived it. This version of silencing of narratives that are not convenient to you politically. Um, I mean, just with your knowledge of that region, your knowledge of propaganda from people like Putin, people like Lukashenko, um, what, what can the American public, how can we better understand this moment in history that we're living in and the stakes that we're facing? You know, the crazy part, Jessica, I mean, it's playing out an open view. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, yeah. I mean, usually the Kremlin is secretive. I mean, usually you don't see spies getting caught. You don't see agents turning. You don't. See, yeah. I mean, the things that we are seeing now is on, it's, it's playing out. And then we have a dictator like Donald Trump telling us that what he's going to do when he gets into office, that he's going to be a dictator and he wants to idolize Putin. I mean, you have to understand, uh, a lot of people say, you know, uh, Trump has a relationship with Putin and, uh, you know, he tells him. Trump is a useful idiot. Exactly. Putin would never even speak to Trump or trust Trump in anything uh, serious mm -hmm. because he doesn't have to. Just think about it. Yeah. Putin, Trump has l lived his life trying to appease different people from mobsters to his father to a businessman to try and make himself look to be somebody he's not. Mm -hmm. Now he's put in a position where he's supposed to be a world leader. And now how is he going to appease people that he admires like Putin and Xi and, you know, his love letters to Kim Jong-un, you know. So mm -hmm. let's take Putin for a second. He knows that Putin's number one uh, thorn in his side is NATO. What is Trump constantly talking about is dismantling NATO. And right before the elections, what does Trump do? He sends a message. 
telling uh, NATO basically that if you decide you're not going to pay your fair share, I'm going to allow Putin, I'm going to actually tell him, Putin, to do whatever he wants. Whatever what the hell he wants. Yeah. And what happens a few days later? Putin responds with a message by killing uh, Navalny. I know. I know. They, he, is, messages, Donald Trump is complicit in this. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. These are all clear messages that are going on. And then it, it, people might think that these are coincidences that yeah. all of a sudden Putin took uh, arrested this figure skater or Putin arrested this journalist or Putin arrested these American citizens. No, these are ammunition because he knows that we haven't seen everything. This guy that we arrested, this is just one of his pawns. There's plenty of pawns running around. I mean, he's got his hands deep into our Congress. He has his con deep into our, uh, uh, our government. He has his hands deep into our judicial system, and that's the scary part. And I, and it's unbelievable how people are not seeing it play out in front of their own eyes, and they're allowing this to happen. Yeah, and, you know, uh, Putin, uh, he's not going to stop. He, uh, from the day he came into office, his agenda was to get the old Soviet Union back together. And by doing that, he needs to take over a country like Ukraine. He needs to be a power uh, because Russia right now is fake. It's not the powerhouse it used to be. You know, it's not what we envisioned that it was in the 80s during the Cold War. When the Soviet Union fell, they became a lot weaker. And basically, he's playing Putin right now is sitting back and letting Trump do handle everything and I'm very scared and I think and I and I want the American public to know very much that this election we are going to have the most Russian interference ever that we've seen in our life because this is the most crucial election not only for our country but for Vladimir Putin because Vladimir Putin understands that if Trump does not win his war, he's going to lose Ukraine, and it, there's going to be hell to pay for everything he's done. He's bet it all on. He's all in. You know, in poker they say all in. He's all in on Trump. He's, he's all, all in, in on Trump. And 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 we need to be very good because we this just, what we've seen. We still have a whole year, nine months before the elections. Trust me and remember this. You heard it here first on Jessica Doss and Denson with lights on. We're going to see more of uh, Russian assets come out uh, that, uh, and we're going to be in shock. They're dealing inside congressional, the Republican congressional arm or Rudy Giuliani or the people associated to Trump. Absolutely. And I have a question for you in just a minute. I'm going to start taking questions for the audience. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Lev, you and I, were once in a state of mind when we believed that this Republican Party led by Donald Trump were, was the Freedom Party. Yep. We believed insanely that these people stood for human rights. Human rights, yeah. We were completely blinded to what's actually going on. And there's millions of Americans that are still being led down this uh this false, you know, into this propaganda nonsense. Well, what well, happened, Jessica? And you tell me if I'm wrong, but the Republican yeah. Party party received a major disease cancer called Donald Trump and it spread so viciously and it took over the whole uh, I mean basically Republican Party one way or the other either by fear or by strength or by you know subordination they were I think Lev they were primed for it because of their own corruption it yeah, was, were, it was that's deep the, rooted for decades yeah 100 percent Jessica yeah. it was deep rooted and it was just it was like you know that pimple that needed to burst that volcano that needed to explode and Donald Trump was that 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 uh moment and yeah we're seeing you know uh you know i truly believe that he's going to he already destroyed the republican party i think he's uh, okay. there go it's going to take him some time to rebuild but uh uh look the world needs to know and american public needs to know and all the listeners and all the viewers need to know and i know some people come up here and say this is the most important election or they talk about saying you know you have your own agenda but trust me I was with this guy for every day for four years. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've lived it. And the most imp important part is I've experienced what happens when I went against him. When I went, when I tried to tell the truth, and Jessica experienced it alongside with me, maybe in different degrees. I mean, they turned her life upside down, suing her. I mean, an NDA? Come on, give me a break. Let's not, I don't, I mean, that is incredible. And I congratulate you for taking it and winning it and kicking his ass. Thank and, you. you know, and, and all I'm trying to do is get my life back in order. But the most important thing is I want to make sure that the public really knows the truth that, yeah. you know, you know, and that's why I'm out there on Twitter. That's why I'm out there on television and I'm out there and constantly trying to get to work because I, I, I see all of these 
prominent uh, social media and prominent media yeah. personalities come out there spreading lies with no facts, no facts. And you know, Jessica, I started calling him out. I went out and I challenged Elon Musk. I said, Elon Musk, you know, you're out there twittering, supporting all of this uh, propaganda that Russia's pushing to about Ukraine. Why don't you come out with me on X spaces of challenge? I challenge you to a debate. I'll show you the facts. I'll bring the receipts. He hasn't responded. See, these, yeah. this is what I'm trying to say to you. They're out there doing it, but when you put it, the facts to them, they're scared. That's why you have Comer that doesn't want to call me. And uh, I mean, they're fighting every opportunity not to take my testimony. I mean, it's it's a joke. It's a joke. And I, it just, I mean, I truly believe, though, in, in my heart, the majority of our country sees through this. And when election time comes, Donald Trump is going to see a message he's not even ready for. He's going to lose and lose badly, you know, Let's like he's it. never seen. That, I mean, I truly feel it. I mean, I, I really believe it. And this small it's part up of to the, us. It's up to us. Exactly. Every you know one of us, every yep. one of you needs to. I mean, that's how important this election is. Yeah. And I know, Lev, you and I, I mean, when you're, when you're talking about why you do this and, you know, like, I, there's a lot of other things I'd rather be doing right now. Like, uh, to be honest with you, I love doing Lights On and I love I love our audience. And I'm going to tell our audience right this moment, I'm here because of you. I'm here because of you. Um, but there's a lot of other things I love. You know, I'm a creative. I, I, I'm I I'm actually an actress. That's my career before, awesome. having, before having an education as a journalist. Um, and that's where my heart is. There's many other things that I could be fulfilling myself with right now. But I cannot, and I think you're in the same boat, I cannot be living in this period of history knowing what I know um, and knowing the stakes that we're facing without raising the alarms every single day. It's why I do okay. this. It's why I'm here. God bless you, Jessica. And, and God bless everyone, everybody out there that's doing fighting the fight yeah. and trying You're, to. God bless you, but love. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. I mean, yeah, I mean, I have six kids, a wife, a dog, a cat. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you, and, and and I've been away from my family for a long time with all of this happened. So trust yeah. me when I tell you, I, I have lots to do and the yeah. time to make up and spend. But as important as that all is, it's a lot more important right now to save yeah. our democracy and save it's our everything. country. It's because, everything. Because, because I want them to grow up in a country and That's have great. the same abilities that I had when growing up in the great country of the United States of America and not the country that we live in today that, you know, is just a shambles and and, and, and divisive to such a degree that we're at the tip of a civil war. I mean, it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. And it's yeah. all to one man, Donald J. Trump. I know. I know. He, How pathetic. He, he, How deserves, pathetic. he deserves that and title. Man you know, of all men. He yeah, he got he I I that's the trophy I would give him. You've created the most division in America. You've yes. turned us upside down, you've turned the world upside down, you've created chaos, mayhem, and did all this. And how many people died because of your stupid ass? A lot. Yes, you deserve wow. that. You deserve that title, Donald Trump. So yes, and I'm sorry for, if I got a little bit heated, but uh no, okay. what's going on is just incredible. No, he deserves it. And and I'll just bring it, I'll just I'll just bring it back to where I started this whole thing. Accountability for Donald Trump is even a gift to him because he is one sad, lonely man that's never known the truth. And there's nothing sadder in life than living a lie. So, you know, even even to Donald Trump, the poor pathetic orange man that he is, accountability is is a gift to him. Absolutely. Um, yes. yeah. well said. Very well said. I mean, yes. a, lot of a lot of people don't realize how lonely he is because he you really said is. That. Yeah, he really I mean, is. Yes. Well, yeah. lies are a lonely place to inhabit. So, um, but Lev, I want to I want to open up the questions to the audience. If I have a couple on the yeah. deck already, but if um, everybody in the chat wants to um, wants to type them in right now, I'll start with one that was back a few minutes ago. Um, does Lev Parnas? Do you Lev know Ina Yashinshin, who golfed with Trump at Mar-a-Lago and took the U.S. Trump Russia file back to Moscow when she fled the USA for Moscow? Wow, uh, no, that name doesn't sound familiar. I pronounce it right now. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, there's been so many uh, incidents in Mar-a-Lago that... Uh, oh, my God, yeah. Russian, Chinese... China, uh, Russia, yeah. Uh, that uh, I, it doesn't it doesn't put any... I, I, I believe it. I, I don't know it, but I'm sure that happened. I mean, there's lots of things that go on in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me about it. Especially the bathroom where, we, where, where he hides things. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> as Jasmine Crockett, who I had the pleasure of interviewing this week, says, next to the shitter, right? Next to, <laughs> next to the shitter. <laughs> you can't make this up. When I see those pictures of secret documents, you know, national security files in the back. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. All right. What are the chances Putin will offer to trade Smirnov for the U.S. Russian ballerina and or the U.S. reporters? Um, and how long do you think well, this? I'll let you go with that and I'll give you part two in a, in a minute. All right. Well, I think I think that's his all. That's the M.O. I, I think that uh, these people are uh, basically Putin is using them as pawns to be able to negotiate a bargain because he understands he has lots of assets out here. And this campaign is going to go on to be able to bargain and trade. Definitely. Um, as far as I guess the second question is how long it probably will take. Well, oh no, this was the, the second one was actually a separate one. It says, How long okay. do you think it'll take the Russian people to turn against Putin? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen uh, because you have to understand uh, uh, a lot of people living in the United States don't understand what it is to live in, in, in Russia. I mean, 90% of they the country. They need to understand what it's right. like. So yeah. 90% of the country still lives like it's, you know, 1940s or 1950s where they still grow their own food and not everyone has electricity, not everybody has, you know. So, I mean, even though it's available, but it's just, you know, it's villages. The you know, majority of it's a vast country. And then you have your 10%, which is Moscow, Leningrad, and some of the major cities that make up the the, the people that we are, travel and see. So the way the machine, the propaganda machine is set up in, in Russia, those mm -hmm. 90%, I mean, they look up to Putin as he's God. They don't they don't know any other. They don't well, know. They're afraid. They're just afraid. They, they Fear is a way of life for them, isn't it's, it? It's, it's not even fear. They don't know what the first thing you know, If you've never, exactly. tried, if you've never tried sushi, you don't know if you like it or you don't like it. If you they never don't even tried, know what freedom yeah, feels like. They don't know. You know, in Russia, I mean, in the, right now, because they're so censored with the way television is, they probably have several, a, a, a few channels, and they're only spewing the same propaganda. It's the same thing, and it's just, you know, if you don't hear any other information, and that's the whole, basically how Trump runs his mega call because it's the same he basically does it the way putin does runs this country trump runs his mega cult by feeding him non-stop same information and if you say it, it's the stalin effect if you say something long enough more enough people start believing it if you say something that's white keep saying it's black long enough eventually people start agreeing with you it's black and that's the effect i mean if you look at trump he just says the same thing but he never brings any bases or facts yeah, you point out basically mental slavery. It's the mental exactly. slavery yeah, that these people slavery. are in. But I want to—I just want to put a shout out to all of the people fighting for freedom in Russia. I have Russian friends who um, very much see what's going on and very much see um, are hopeful for that brighter day in Russia. One thing that uh, Alexei Navalny's wife has, Yulia, has called on everybody to do is to write in Alexei Navalny's name at this at, during this election that's coming up in March. This obviously what's going to be a rigged election, and for mm -hmm. all of the Russian supporters of Alexei Navalny who are in opposition to Putin to show up at noon on election day to cast their ballot. So even though he's going to lie about the election results, there's a visible show of of how many people there really are that are against this regime. You know, Jessica, I, I would I would I would add to it and I think yeah. she's 100% right and I support her and I hope that the people will rise up and stand up and show the support on election day and everything. But I think the world not just uh, the Russian people, the world owes it to Navalny. I think on that day, it, we should stand up all we over should. the world we and should. show a sign of uh, 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 support and show Putin the strength that the world is against him. Because yep. it, those people need our support because if Thank they stand out there, they're gonna get arrested, they're gonna get beat, and you know, it's gonna be a story or two. A, but if the world stands up to it and you have these protests, and different countries and different states that's when you know it starts making a difference and i think that's important and i would love to help support and, and be a part of that me too me too well this next question is right on that theme of support um it's actually a question for both of us but i'll let you answer first it says jessica and lev after all you've been through how did you mentally get through all of this I'm still getting through it. I be, I'm being honest with you. It's it's yeah. been a crazy ride. I mean, uh, I almost lost my family. I almost mm -hmm. lost my kids, my wife, my dignity, my saneness. I you know, I mean, um, I started you know, 
believing everything I didn't believe in. It, it's just, it's being in a cult, unless you're in it, it's difficult to understand because you, you, you can't believe it unless you're, you, you have to experience it. But lo losing your mind and believing people into no matter what is said, even though you look at something and you really realize that it, I don't think it's there, but you still somehow your mind fights it and you then yeah. hardcore believe it. It's very scary. And as bad as being arrested was, it was the best thing that happened to me because God knows where I could have been if I continued to stay in the cult of Trump and then January 6th and everything else. I mean, I probably would not have my family and would be a different person. So I thank God what happened yeah. happened. It gave me a time to reflect, understand, and uh, understand what actually was happening. And now I'm trying to use all of that to do good and use that in a good cause to be able to stop this tyrant and all these crazy people to help our democracy. So that's, so I'm still fighting it and living with it, but with the support of an incredible wife and incredible kids, a lovely sister that stand by me every day. I mean, oh. I have and a doggy and a kitty that love you and a lot. Doggy and a kitty, yeah. So <laughs> get, it gives me the strength to, you know, and the support. And I'll tell you, you know, I really want to say the love and support I get from people out there. Yeah. It's incredible. And I just want to say I thank you and I I cherish it. I'm I humbled by it. And I promise you I will continue to make you proud and continue to it's speak to truth to power and get the truth out there. Amen to that, love. And I can I can relate to so much of it. I I too will say I'm still going, I'm still going through it. <laughs> um, I'm just now, I, we're definitely gonna make sure everybody knows where to get your book before we leave, but I'm just writing my book now. And I, I of course put the legal oh, work first. And there's so many things that people don't know about that if yeah. I like even say one word, I'm gonna start crying right now on camera, which um, I don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it was for me, it was and it continues to be knowing that I stood with truth in the beginning and getting that direction from God. And my understanding of God is not some man in the sky. It's the, it's the omnipotent principle of truth that governs the universe. So mm -hmm. I got that guidance from truth itself to take this action as afraid as, and resistant I as I was. And that has constantly been my fallback. I mean, when I was being threatened during the Trump administration, when I was, you know, facing bankruptcy, potential bankruptcy, all yeah. of these very scary moments, I always fell back to that. I, I, I remembered, okay, I acted with truth and that's my shield. That's, that's got it. me. It's that's got it. me. And so, um, that saved you, and that's what brought you back up. And that's what yeah. uh, uh, yeah. truth will set you free. You know, Absolutely. that save for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just you know, I want to just uh, I congratulate you. And I look forward. Can we wait to read your book? And oh, thank I'll you. Copy of mine, but you know, a lot of people out there make comments about people writing books that they try. So, oh, you're trying to monetize your. You know what? People don't understand that if we didn't write the books, you wouldn't know the truth in the stories. I mean, it's not about much. I mean, you and it's also the timing, especially. Right. I want to bring this out because you and I. <laughs> We didn't yeah. put the book first. Like no, we've been talking no. for years. Yeah, that's why I love you. You know, that's why I love you and my writer there. So you could just shut up, stop going out there. So I said, yeah. I don't care about no. that. I said, I want to get it out there. The book yeah. is just going to go out and fill in the, the blanks and I'll really let people understand to the detail because yeah. not one headline, not one story, not one video, not one interview could tell you the story. Uh, but a book yeah. and a documentary and uh, you know those are the things that could really you know nothing like a book right jessica that could yes really yeah. get down to it really lay it out you have yeah, you so, need it for so, that detail yeah so yeah. i congratulate you and i hope that everybody goes out there and, and uh, gets my book because i think you will really really be happy to find out and see and understand and what really transpired. Uh, I also talk about not only uh, uh, Ukraine, but we go into Venezuela, we go into Turkey, we go into relationships between Trump and Devin Nunez and uh, Derek Carvey. And uh, I mean, names that, you know, are probably not familiar to all of you, but uh, things that, you know, a lot of you don't know because it was covered up by the uh, the GOP, they didn't call me as a witness. They didn't call anybody as a witness. They no gave him a free ride. Nope. They gave him a free ride. And yes, you know there are people out there that go and are fully in tune, but majority of the world doesn't know what happened, and they have no clue. And I think you know you really need to read the book because I think it'll make a difference. And I I say that not just to Democrats, to Republicans also. I'd say it to every because you know what you make your own decision if you really still want to vote for this guy after you read my book. 
Well, go I'd read his that. book. It's <laughs> called Shadow Diplomacy, Lev Parnas and His Wild Ride from Brooklyn to Trump's Inner Circle. I think it's available on Amazon. You can get it yep, at Kindle. Um, wherever books are sold, go check it out for sure. Um, and I also, just in the in the vein of what you were saying, Lev, I, I put out a video earlier this week. Um, our Lights On viewers, and I, I don't know if you guys all know this that are watching, but I almost never, and when I say almost never, I mean, I never do videos on my own. I have this, <laughs> I have this weird phobia of being on screen by myself. So I have to do, I have to do interviews, but I, I did my own video <laughs> little confession here at the beginning of this week um, to put out some news about my case and Justice and Goran. Um, it was been viewed almost 800,000 times. The feedback has yeah. been absolutely phenomenal from people that have already known me and people that just got to know me. And I will echo what you said, Lev, that support means the world. It keeps us going. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much, everybody, for that. Absolutely. Um, Lev, before you leave, you know that I wanted to kind of highlight the plight of political, real political prisoners, not fake political yeah. prisoners like Trump and his allies that actually committed crimes, but real political prisoners in the world. Um, one of the people that um, Alexei Navalny's wife met with was um, the very brave Belarusian opposition leader who um, considers herself the president-elect and many, many agree that that 2020 election in Belarus was stolen by Lukashenko, who is of course um, Putin's puppet. This is Svetlana Sikhanouskaya, very, very brave woman um, leading opposition out of um, in exile from Belarus. She's constantly highlighting the plight of political prisoners. There are so many in Belarus today, her husband included, whose whereabouts are unknown, who have disappeared from public view. Um, in Russia, in Russia, all eyes right now, including mine, I think yours are on Vladimir Karamurza, the other extremely yeah. brave um, Russian Brilliant. opposition leader. And um, I wanted to play this clip. This is just a couple days ago, how brave this man is speaking now, out now, even after um, Navalny's death. This is Vladimir Karamurza in prison in Russia. <laughs> Очень много уныния, очень много отчаяния, которое понятно по-человечески. Я сам в тумане всю эту неделю нахожусь. Я до сих пор ни разу ни носа не воспринимаю то, что случилось. Но если мы будем поддаваться унынию, впадать в отчаяние, это ровно то, что им нужно. Мы не имеем права этого делать. И мы нашим погибшим товарищам в первую очередь обязаны тем, чтобы продолжать работать с еще большей силой. И добиться того, ради чего они жили, ради чего они погибли. Чтобы Россия стала нормальной, свободной, европейской, демократической страной. Я абсолютно не сомневаюсь, что как и будет, будущее остановить не сможет никто, как бы они ни хотели. Поэтому, друзья, никакого отчаяния, никакого уныния мы себе позволить не можем. Леша сам сказал, не сдавайтесь. Сдаваться нельзя. He doesn't give up. We sure as hell have no right to give up, do we? Yeah. You know what, Jessica, I just want to say, I mean, men like him, men like Navalny, that's a certain kind of individual. I mean, Navalny could have been living with as a rich individual and fighting this corruptions overseas, but he chose to get down that plane after being uh, poisoned and traveled back to Russia, knowing that he was going to get arrested and knowing that he's probably going to die. Yes. And he chose that to try to, to make, to show the world what kind of monster this Putin is. And, and this is another individual that what is sitting there knowing that he's probably going to get reprimanded for this video he's he's going to pay for that but is doesn't care about his own life his own freedom to be able to get these messages out to understand how evil these people out yeah. and people need to start listening because th these are incredible men and 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 i just i pray for them me too and women, i mean and and i'm sorry and women men and women because men and women wild. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what they're going through. I mean, Svetlana, I mean, she's in exile. I mean, I, it just, it's, yeah. Absolutely. And and our, our victory for democracy in the United States means everything to the rest of the world. Everything. We are the leaders. We are the ones that have to hold down this fort and, and us defeating Donald Trump, defeating this lie, this insanity, will obviously empower those who are fighting oppression around the world. 100%. I mean, we're fighting for our freedom. 
2024 is about freedom. That's, yeah. that's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, it's freedom about women's rights and about their body. It's, it's freedom about, you know, what's going on in the world, you know, in the countries. It's freedom about being able to speak out. It's freedom about, you know, being able to have a normal conversation across the table with a family member that doesn't agree with you with politic, politics. It doesn't happen anymore. Our families are divided. Our country's divided. The world's divided. And all because of Donald Trump. So, yeah. I mean, people like Navalny is, is just a tribute to what we need to strive for. To because he gave his life to show what kind of tyrants. So if we want to live in Russia, you know, go move to Russia. Yeah, exactly. Why do you want America, Russia? You know, Putin's waiting for you. He'll build you a mega. He's, he'll welcome you in. Go. Bye-bye. Yeah. Leave our, leave us our free America. We're in for us. a li very unpleasant surprise. Yeah. Lev Parnas, such a pleasure to finally meet you. Um, thanks so much for joining me today on Lights On. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Uh, I'm also so I've heard so much about you and finally see you. That's great. Wow. Incredible show. Uh, and uh, even with the fire alarm. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we had some fun today. Took we a field did. trip outside. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lev, and thanks to our wonderful audience and for your participation and your questions. Um, as always, thank you so much for your loving support, your, your outpouring of support. Um, we need continued help in my legal battle to uh, hold the Trump campaign about accountable. And if you would like to support us, you can do that at thejessicadenson.com slash donate, thejessicadenson.com slash donate. Thank you so much to those of you who are, are helping us out there. It means the world. Um, as always, everybody, have a wonderful weekend. Stay strong in this fight. We've got this. We just have to stay alive and alert and always let our lights shine.